Uh, if you're going to fill them in here, just fill them from inside the car. It's not an area that you should be out walking about here. This would still be an area that would have a lot of tension on it. Uh, in front of you is another peace wall. On the other side of that peace wall are the Catholics. And these houses here have been damaged by those Catholics sort of driving the people out of this area. And they, why do they don't knock these horrible they, they, houses they, down? They, they, they will be knocked down. If you look down the street here though, you'll see the people are living wow. in the middle of that. And still the flags flying. Again, it's the stubbornness, the act of defence that we don't give in. They don't like strangers, they don't like change. They feel that it's a threat. Even you yourself, if somebody was talking to you and say you're, you, you're a Jew, uh, they'd be very inclined to ask you, are you a Protestant Jew? <laughs> you know, I mean, and that's just the mentality of it, you know? <laughs> Listen, a guy came up to me and he said, you're Israeli? Yeah. You're Arabic Israeli or Jewish Israeli? <laughs> and, uh, and the guy said, no, no, he's okay, he's a Protestant Israeli. <laughs> I grew up wanting to live in the UK and always dreamt of Ireland. In the summer of 2009, my wife Julia, who I met in Tel Aviv when she was the British cultural attaché in Israel, got a new posting in Northern Ireland. Hello. Initially, I thought this was a dream come true, the perfect combination of my British-Irish childhood fantasy, moving to Belfast as far away as you can get from the Israeli heat and the Jewish-Arabic conflict in the land of Israel. But to my dismay, I was unable to escape this conflict. Like in Israel, the scars of division are all around me. A huge peace wall divides this city. If that was not enough, I suddenly noticed that Catholic and Protestants seem to have embraced a new conflict, a conflict that I wanted to escape. Throughout 2,000 years of Jewish diaspora, the Jews dreamt of returning to their homeland in Zion. The first Zionists started to arrive in Israel at the end of the 19th century and were promised a national home by the British government. The arrival of Jewish Zionists led to violent clashes with the Arabic Muslim communities within the region. In November 1947, the United Nations had given approval for the Jews to establish a Jewish state. The Arab nations rejected this proposal and declared war on the new Israeli state. Jewish forces won this war, and some 700,000 Palestinian Arabs fled from the country. This was the catalyst for over 60 years of violent conflict between Israelis and Palestinian Arabs. The kind of person I am, I'm a sensitive guy. When I get into a certain place, I always try to understand the local psychology, the local way of thinking. And in Northern Ireland, I think it was far more interesting than other places because I felt and I feel that it's got something to do with me personally being an Israeli who ended up here in Northern Ireland. Nowhere is the Protestant support for Israel more evident than on Belfast Sandy Road that hosts two notorious bars, the Royal and the Rangers Supporters Club that carry their politics into football. I was shot three times and blew up twice. They blew up my car and I, I lost a child at five years of age. Really? Yeah, they blew my car up, killed my child and I turned me in Arsenal. What do you mean by turn you nasty? Then I went for uh... a revenge. Mm -hmm. the Protestant loyalist or unionist is one of the few communities in the Western world at the moment that sees Israeli point well, of I view. Well, I can't speak for uh, the Protestant community. I can't speak from a loyalist community. I'm speaking from a personal point of view, sure. who, who am a loyalist and I am a Protestant. And I can only speak from our point of view, but I, and, and you're right in what you say, that 
the vast majority of that community can sympathise with Israel. And Israel is an example to the rest of the world. And I think all Israelis are brilliant people. And I love what they're doing. I love their stance. I'm a British citizen. My father fought for the free, not only the Jews, to free everybody from the Nazis. I would die for Israel, yeah. Needed. Yeah. Yeah, I would die for Israel, yeah. Not a problem. I would die for Ulster. But the only place I can put close to my heart would be Israel. Because they're in a press country. Nobody likes them. And nobody likes us. <laughs> you hate the Hamas? Hate Hamas. Blowing people up. Women, women, children. No good. And, and why do you hate them? Because they're blowing, they're blowing up bars, pubs, restaurants. They're no good, no good. Sending missiles over Israel for nothing. Fuck them. The strange thing is that despite their great love for Israel that somehow comes from the far-right tendencies, their identification with British culture is something I admire, because as a teenager, I was immersed in the 60s British subculture, the mods. Most of the Western world is very critical about TV. Israel at the moment. We understand your criticism you, you have received. You have received criticism you don't deserve. And it's the same as the Protestant people in Northern Ireland. We receive criticism from all around the world which is not deserved to us. The world do not hear your point of view. The world here are Palestinians. And the Palestinian propaganda is better than yours. Much just better. as the Republican propaganda is better than ours. But that's the only thing that is okay. better than us. And come tell me, Sean O'Farrell, tell me why you hurried so. I shall vocal, I shall listen, and his cheeks are all aglow. He'll bear orders from the captain, get you ready quick and soon. For the pikes must be together at the rising of the moon. At the rising of the moon, at the rising of the moon. For the pikes must be together at the Republican legends and the Irish struggle for independence were also part of my life because as a youth I fell in love with the Pogues, the Dubliners, Irish rebel music and Irish culture in general. History is full of uh, little ironies. You know, traditionally in Israel, mm -hmm. especially in the Likud and the right wing movement, yeah, yeah. there is a big total support towards Irish republicanism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Yitzhak Shamir, who was yeah, yeah. later our Prime Minister, yeah, yeah, yeah. his nickname in, in the Irgun was, as the head of the Irgun, was Michael after Michael Collins. Yeah. And oh, yeah. the loyalists that I've met who wave Israeli flags in their yeah, neighborhoods yeah, yeah, yeah. forget That's, that yeah. in the 40s the Israelis yeah. quite severely fought the, against the British, the British occupation yeah. in, in Israel. How did you 
sought out to, to join the struggle, to join yeah, the piano? Yeah, how did I sort out to join it? The conditions are there. We grew up with a sense from a very, very young age that there's something wrong with the society. And we were second class citizens. Just knew when you growing up, you weren't going to get a job in the shipyards. You knew that the city hall wasn't our city hall. You, you hear four o'clock in the morning, people's doors getting kicked down. You see your, your, your father's friends and neighbours being dragged from their homes, going to internment ships, internment camps. At a young age, it's very natural for us to say, right, we got to do something. Now, we grew up with Christian families, good values, very normal young boys, and all of a sudden, within those couple of months, we're sitting in the room learning how to make bombs. I mean, that's not natural for 14 or 15 year olds. We didn't fall out of a tree to want to be urban guerrillas, you know, uh, Neil Bowman, urban guerrillas. We were conditioned, it was the conditions. I mean, you're looking at Palestine, you're looking at the Gaza Strip, you know, and you look at the West Bank, the densely populated areas, you know, the, the sense of uh, uh, occupation. It's happened the seeds all around. You know, the, the idea that someone is a second-class citizen yeah. in the land of their birth, people don't care whether they live or die. And it, it creates that whole mentality then that gives rise to the, you know, this notion of suicide bombing. <laughs> The 11th of July is the start of the most important part of Ulster Protestant culture. Julia and I were invited to come along and witness the celebration. It reminded me of the Jewish festival of Lag Baomer, when bonfires are lit across the world to symbolize the fighting Jewish spirit. Like the Jewish festival, this could have been a nice family night out if it wasn't for the burning of Irish tricolors, Palestinian flags, and sometimes even pictures of the Pope. And so we do pray the Lord that we'll have a good day. Let us just bow our heads in prayer now. We leave ourselves in your loving care. At the end of it all, we pray that you will bring us back in safety. Amen. A friend of mine invited me to walk with him on the 12th of July parade. Given the fact that I loved the costumes, I said, why not? I would never get the chance to do it back at home. So how, how do you, if I wanted to join the Lords, how can I do that? You'd have to, like, say me and Sammy, we'd have to say that we know, we've known you for like a couple of years. And okay. that you're a good guy, you're not, but basically you're not a Catholic. This colorful festival continues to cause tension amongst communities here and leads to serious rioting every year. To be honest, I cannot see what the fuss is all about. Perhaps my friend Lola, who is not a Protestant, would think differently. So what do you feel in a day like today? Um, do you oppose those parades? You think they don't have the right to parade the Orange Men? Well, you see, they, they would say that it's part of their culture, and I would be the first person to say, if it's, if it's a respectful part of your culture, you're totally entitled to it. OK. You know? Uh, but there is my, a, there my is, association with it... Is political. It, it ...has been that it was a symbol uh, and a festival of oppression. Uh, you know, from my point of view, it was always uh, an anti-Catholic uh, festival. Funny enough, I found quite a lot of my Catholic friends are quite in interested in Jewish culture and Jewish history. 
Very much so. Though politically they are anti-Israeli, or in some cases. Um, anti-Israeli? No, I mean, yeah. But the, the Catholic population at, at large? In Northern Ireland? I think they have difficulty with the sense of oppression of a, a minority because that's what they are themselves, yeah. if that's what you mean. Yeah. But that, it's too bold a statement to say that they're anti-Israeli, in my opinion. Well, they are pro-Palestinians. And mm. therefore... Yeah, that's too, that's too generalised too. They are against the oppression of the Palestinian mm. state, I think, because they identify themselves with the notion of an oppressed people. Mm. Even in South Belfast, there is an area called the Holy Land. I seem to be constantly reminded that I am never too far away from home. In fact, every month, local Palestinian activists hold a vigil of support outside Belfast City Hall. So, I'm very proud to be here today. And while we always talk about the Israeli atrocities towards the Palestinians, I also would like to take this moment to single out the uh, individuals and the various groups in Israel that have stood tall for the Palestinians. They're a very, very, very uh, loud voice in a, in, a, in a big sea. And it's through them coming forward as well and them saying, enough is enough. I spoke to John Harson, the founder of Gaza TV News, to find out more. A Jewish state is a racist state because it's, it's only designed and it's, it's governed for Why, Jews it, only. It, Judaism is a nation. To be a Jew, for me, is be part of the Jewish nation. No, being Jewish is a religion, it's not a state. Yeah, you can, say biggest, you yeah. can tell me what I am. That's the biggest misconception out there. I mean, being a Jew, Jewish, Jew, Jew, it's Judaism the only is not a state, re, no, it's, it's religion. The, it's the only religion. A religion can't be a state. It's the, only, it's the only religion that is both national and religious. And But how is it a nation? That, what do you mean? It, 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 it's never been a nation. So you believe that the idea of having a Zionist Jewish state is a false idea? Totally. Because it's, it's so and prejudiced find... and so apartheid. I mean, we, we, we were all a, a repulsed at apartheid South Africa and the way that the blacks had to carry around these little ID papers and the, what they had to go through. Well, the Palestinians are worse off than that. I mean, one has to look just at Gaza alone with 1,400 people murdered in three weeks, and that's state murder. So, I mean, here you have these people that were under a ferocious attack and they couldn't escape. There was nowhere to go. You know, and in Northern Ireland, there's a little area here called the uh, Ards Peninsula. And it's uh, just in around the same size of Gaza. So if you can imagine the whole of Northern Ireland's population in that little small area under attack and they're locked up and they can't get out. The siege is uh, the naval blockade and, the, and around the borders. And it was like, that was the one thing that got me is like, why can the aid not get in? to these people? Why can you know, these people not get out? And that was the inhumane uh, aspect of it. I received an email in Hebrew from a man named Jim Clint, inviting me to a Friday night Shabbat service. The fact that someone from Northern Ireland wrote to me in Hebrew frightened me, perhaps as a result of my inbuilt Jewish paranoia. Despite this, I traveled to the beautiful seaside town of Donachedi. You guys come from a Protestant background, most of you are. Most, most often, but we, we wouldn't class ourselves, like, as I am now, I wouldn't class myself even Christian, even Protestant, Catholic. i just a believer. An imam be Yeshua, that's all I say. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, 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 shabbat shalom. We pray that, because we're commanded in the Tanakh, we're commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the protection of the borders of Israel. The protection of the soldiers, the police, you know, the, the authorities.
Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom your biggest yeah. dream is to live in Israel yeah. and to be an Israeli citizen. Now, Still, we, yeah. we were sitting in this most beautiful place in the world and I really can't understand who would like to live that thing for the Israel. heat of the Israeli desert. Uh, I don't know. Northern Ireland, I know it's nice and sometimes maybe I can't see the, the beauty. But for me, my heart is Jewish. I'm not Jewish and my heart is Jewish because of what I believe in, you know, what Yeshua has done for me. I wonder how Rabbi Menachem Mendel Breckman, Rabbi of Belfast, feels about Northern Ireland's obsession with the Holy Land. In, in Belfast, the Palestinian flag is because of the, the, the Catholics are the underdogs. Yeah. And the Israelis flag us because they are the, so to say, the, the superior, they are able to control them. Yeah. So therefore, it's not necessarily a love to Israel. It's just that they, they, they have decided that there's, with the Israelis, they found a different, another fight, another part of the world, and they have so, so decided that, that in Israel, they are, they, are, they are like the Israelis, and they're, they're like the Palestinians. Do they really like Israel? I don't know. <laughs> what do you feel when you see the Israeli flag flying over next to the Union Jack and the Ulster flag? Or? Well, if they're safe neighborhoods, they're safe neighborhoods, whatever they're flying. They're not safe neighborhoods. Then they're not safe neighborhoods, even if the Israeli flags are flying. Yeah. We met a lot of people from different Protestant sects, and they love Judaism out of this radical Protestant belief. And it, you can find it I, here. I, 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 as I said before, I'm very wary of that very a bit scared and a bit, a bit admire it. I'm scared that their motives are not the right motives. <laughs> There is a small but vibrant Jewish community here in Belfast. Gordon McKnight, a Protestant from Bangor, is just about to head to Miami to complete his conversion to Judaism. What, what do you feel when you see the Israeli flag being hoisted in different loyalist areas here in Northern Ireland? Do you share this kind of Protestant support of Israel? Because you, you do have a, yeah, a, I would like to a badge that you badge. can get in some uh, Union Jack um, shops. I, th I, th I think that says it all, really. Oh, OK. Uh, whenever I see the Israeli flag being hoisted anywhere, really, I tend to feel an immense amount of pride. Uh, it's strange. I'm not an Israeli, but I actually feel more Israeli than anything. I feel more Israeli than British. It's a strange, strange and, and, thing. And what do you feel when you see the Palestinian flag being raised in, in, in uh, nationalist and republican areas? Do you find it offensive? It does not conjure up feelings of warmth and affection, but offensive? Um, I don't know. Um, I guess it makes me angry, but offended, I wouldn't... I why, have, why does it make you angry? It makes me angry in the sense that it is a way of denying Israel's right to exist. This, this is my take on it. Would you go and live in Judea and Samaria, for example? Uh, yeah. In a settlement? Yeah, I, I would call it a town, but you can call it a settlement. It's, it's what most people call it. I was in Israel for Shavuot two years ago, and we visited a town near Ariel, and I thought it was a shame that the Jewish people had to live surrounded by fences and protected by the army. I thought it was very unfortunate. Right, 
I am on the road to visit my favorite Hebrew students, the Bingham sisters, who have become sort of surrogate aunts to me here in Northern Ireland. So, what's written here? Shalom. Shalom. And today is? Shabbat. Shalom. Shalom. And I think uh, we can also do with some more everyday life. For the next time you're in Israel, Efo at Gara, Lamadnu it's anachon. Where do you live? Uh Afo at Gala Bangor. And oh and no. Efo at Gala, what's that you You say? Oh yes, Ani Gara Bangor. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You were telling us how you met Protestants and Catholics and prayed together for yes. peace yes. in Northern Ireland. True. Don't you want Jews and Arabs praying together for peace in Israel? Israel is different from Northern Ireland. And it's the, it's the only verse in the Bible that says, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. It doesn't say that about Northern Ireland. It doesn't say that about any other country. So that is why that I have such, I have such love for Israel. I have such love for the Jewish people because God keeps his eye on them. So you feel Jewish? I, I do, I, I, I do, I really do. Unfortunately, one, a li one little bit of me is Gentile, unfortunately. This is what God said to Abraham. Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will bless those who bless you. So I knew that those who bless Israel will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Nearly all my money from about the middle of 20s, and I'm sort of going on to 62, has been given to Israel and no other people. And the, the lady in the, in the office had been saying that uh, we had just been praying that people would actually support us. And I, I rang her up the next day and gives them a gift of, I think it was about 400 pounds. Wow. You know, it's every so often, it's, that's my, all my money's gone to Israel, to the Jewish people. I am one of the 320 million people living in the states of Europe joined pre-Nice Treaty in economic and political union. I am one of the 60 million people living on the islands immediately west of the European Peninsula, one of the 6 million people on the smaller of these islands, of the 1.5 million who inhabit the six northeasternmost counties of the historic nine-county province of Ulster that make up the administrative region of the United Kingdom known as Northern Ireland. With all the problems of identity and nationality, how can they identify mm. so passionately with the Middle East conflict. What do you think is, you know, well, I, I, is the psychology of all that? I think there are... Well, first of all, I, I speak as someone who's a um, member of parliament when I was younger, was, uh, was someone who believed that the Protestants of Ulster were the lost tribe of Israel, um, the Reverend Robert Bradford. And uh, he, was, he was murdered, actually, in Finnegy, where I um, grew up. He was murdered by the IRA. And there has always been this need here for justification, that there is such a thing as a, of the Irish people or the Northern Irish Protestants are somehow... Uh, so you look, for, you look for a lineage. And I think for the for Northern Protestants, the attraction of the lost tribe identity is that it's a pure lineage. It's fucking... It's mad, you know. The the, the lost tribe thing is it's 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 mad. So you don't. But it's equally. But I tell you, it's it's mad, um, and uh, it's equally mad to walk in to a community centre where uh, an MP is conducting a surgery, talking to constituents, and shoot him in the head. Yeah. I am one of the people who voted for the Good Friday Agreement aimed at bringing peace and stability to Northern Ireland and one of the ones who worry that the agreement has made this a more divided place than ever to live in. I am one of the two people who will get out of bed 
to feed Marvin and Daisy Blur the cats in the morning. Correction. I am the only person. I, I remember when I was having conversations with people and they would say, they would always, the first thing they would tell you about someone was what their religion was. And you know, this guy at work, nice fellow, Catholic. You know, that's the way they'd speak, you know, and say, you know, very nice, but Catholic. And I'm a Belfast person, that's first and foremost. But I, I will happily say that I am British and that I am Irish and I am European. And, you know, so you have all of those identities. And then you have the other identities, which are the identities that you have chosen, um, the community of those who you um, relate to, whether it's in terms of music or sport or, you know, and all of these things just make you, well, those, you those are who you are. They make you, they make you who you are, you know. Instead of saying, I hate Catholic or I hate Protestant, I am a unionist or I am a Republican, they say, I support Palestine or I hate Palestine, I support Israel or I hate Israel. And I was trying even to think, could that thing happen in Israel? Would people in Israel or in Palestine would choose somebody else's conflict in order to continue and hate each other? I don't know the answer, but I think not. איננו לאשר בזה כי הבחור גורדון מקנייט למד יהדות והוא יודע הלכות שבת ויום טוב יותר משנה. וואו. So it happened, you, you're full on Jew. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. Yeah, it's, everything feels, feels different. You said that you would love to move to Israel and live, not necessarily in Israel, but in what most of the world regard as occupied territories. Mm -hmm. and you would be happy to live there as a settler. As Tesco say, every little helps. Every extra person helps, every extra family helps. This is how you want to fulfill your Judaism? Well, the Arabs have only been there a very short period of time. And that is why I do not recognize a Palestinian people, nation, nothing. They are a political invention invented after the 1967 war. But you, Mm -hmm. from Bangor or somebody from South Africa or somebody from the United States has more right on the land than they do? You don't find it a, a contradiction? You know, I can see why they would be upset, but, you know... Upset? It's... That's it's kind of an <laughs> understatement, upset. Yeah, it's, it's a, bit of, a bit of an understatement, perhaps, but, you know, my advice would be you had a nice holiday, time to go home. That would be my advice. Gordon McKnight, <laughs> who is now Avram ben Avram, you, who just converted to Judaism, coming from Bangor, are, is entitled to sit in that land, and they who are there, even you claim three generations, they would claim a little bit more, they should go, because they're on vacation. I mean, it actually saddens me that this is, is your understanding of Judaism, and this is your understanding of how you want to help the Jewish people. You know, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, who is the biggest rabbi of all time, mm. yeah, said, Rabbi Akiva said, uh, There's only one big rule in the Torah, love thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that, that said Rabbi Akiva, the greatest Jewish rabbi of all time. So how from love thy neighbor, doesn't say love your Jewish neighbor, just no. love thy neighbor, yeah. yeah? The people in Hebron don't love their neighbors. They oppress their neighbors, I they, I they torture their neighbors, they uh, humiliate their neighbors, they sometimes kill their neighbors. How can you justify that? How can you want to live like that? It's the Arab side that is causing all the tension. The Jewish side has done, I, I believe, more than it could honestly be asked of to do. It has removed roadblocks and it's allowed permits to travel and 
it allows their banks to function and, and all of this. I don't think any more can be asked from Israel. There are still some things I feel I need to say to John Harson. He doesn't seem to understand the ridiculous appropriation of a conflict that doesn't even belong to him. I'm trying to think of myself. I live here. As if I will come and I will say, man, IRA, republicanism, and I mean, wouldn't it be a bit funny to you that I would do that? No. You don't think that it's no, it's not funny like at all. Cho choosing a side where I'm Somebody that it's not See, I don't my put, story. I don't, I don't put fun into uh, struggles. That's one thing I don't do, right? But when no, but you're choosing sides. So like, there are the bad choose, Israelis, the I good choose, Palestinians, and I'm this, with the good Palestinians. I chose the side of the people that were starving. I don't care about land. I don't care about nationality. I don't associate with this whole Irish nationalism or with this British loyalism. I don't care about those things, to be honest with you. If you truly ask me, I find it all A, boring, B, useless. Why do you, we need all the time to define ourselves? I'm an Irish Catholic, I'm a British Protestant, I'm an Israeli Jewish, I'm a Palestinian Muslim Christian. Why we can't just live our life? But I fear sometimes, and I might be wrong, that your kind of activity or other activities, instead of increasing the peace, are increasing hostility and violence. And this is where I find it offensive. So bringing a food and blankets and medicine to people is offensive? No, not at all. That's very important. Yeah. Well, it was offensive in, uh, with the flotilla that went last year because, as you know, nine people were murdered for I'm... bringing food and medicine. Yeah, uh, and I Gaza. was interviewed here on, on telly, which yeah. will probably will be in the film, and I said that I am ashamed to be called Israeli after that attack. Yeah. My wife Julia and I are now moving on again. We are leaving for Paris. So what have I learned here during my time in Northern Ireland? In Belfast, I saw how Catholic and Protestant are all Irish and they all look the same to me. And I don't understand why they hated each other for so long and killed each other for so long. And I think maybe it reflects on, you know, on the place where I'm coming from, where I guess when you would look at me and the Palestinian journalist, you would think there's not much different there and why they can't sit and get along. And I think Belfast and Northern Ireland is, in a, is still a great example of people the majority of the people moving on and the th people who stuck in the past which a lot of people we met are stuck in the past but I think they are holding to something because they don't know how to define themselves and I think I've learned how to define myself regardless to my nationality or my religion and that's something funny enough that I learned in Belfast